Last segment, I teased a no-dumb move the Texans can make. Fire Pep Hamilton or reassign him. Don't let him call plays. If you're serious about trying to show your fan base that you care, how can a guy who did not have Damian Pierce on the field when the game was in a critical spot yesterday on the goal line continue to call the plays? I mean, we can go through all the examples throughout the year where Pep Hamilton has had horrendous play calling. And I get it. The roster's not great. The quarterback play's not great either. But we cannot deny this offense looked a lot better with less talent a year ago with Tim Kelly calling the plays over Pep Hamilton. And look, I think it's an important part of the conversation is that the bar is not, oh, he needs to be Tim Kelly because Tim Kelly was also bad at his job. It's just Pep Hamilton seems to be worse at the job than Tim Kelly was. So you want someone far better than Tim Kelly to be the offensive coordinator. And at times this year, and with a regular basis, Pep Hamilton's looked like a far worse offensive coordinator. And the move of Pep Hamilton and the, and the reassigning or the relieving him of his duties, that's not about 2022. This is not week three, week four of a second-year offensive coordinator and it ain't happening, so you feel like you're, you're setting back a, a, a young quarterback. This is... Week 14 of, of a season that's gone to hell in a handbasket, and you're going to be picking number one. And this guy, to this point, has coached so poorly, there's no chance he's the offensive coordinator next year. There's no chance he's on the staff next year. So it would seem like, from a front office, from a management, from a ownership perspective, showcasing to your fans that the level of play that we have put together the past few weeks on offense is unacceptable and we see that, we understand that. It's a confidence booster, you would hope, if you move on from a guy like Pep Hamilton right now, you showcase people there are consequences for poor results in this organization, especially because this guy, to this point, has not put together a season where he's going to be on the coaching staff next year. That's the biggest thing. If this was a guy that had a chance to be the offensive coordinator or to be a part of the offense next year, you, you, you maybe you give him the opportunity to dig himself out, but it's now dif two different quarterbacks. The offensive line has been healthy for the majority of the season. Damian Pierce has been healthy all year, knock on wood. And, yeah, Brandon Cooks hadn't been in the lineup here or there, but even when Cooks is in the lineup, you haven't found a way to get Brandon Cooks involved. Like, part of that's Cooks. He's just not as good as he was last year. But even then, you haven't found a way to get Brandon Cooks involved, and he's the what, what we thought was the best offensive player on this team when the season started. Showcase to the fans – that you understand as management that what they have put together over the past few weeks is unacceptable. Is that what it does? I'm trying to figure out what firing Pep Hamilton at this point in the season really does because there's five games left, and I don't want the Texans to win any of the last five. I think they're comfortable as far as, like, the first overall pick yeah, where I'll, they're at. So I don't think if they fired Pep and moved on to somebody in-house, they'd all of a sudden win three games and cost themselves the number one It's pick. just maybe sending a message to the yeah. fans. You know, I just it, It's tough to justify how he's still the play caller, though. If you made the change at quarterback because Davis Mills wasn't getting it done, how do you have the same play caller as well? Yeah. How, how do you not do something different? Yeah, like the, the first time I thought the Texans were actually trying to tank happened on that first and goal from the three-yard line yesterday in the second quarter when Damian Pierce wasn't on the field. But Pep Hamilton doesn't deserve that credit because he's been making questionable decisions like that all season long. I mean, his offense has been abysmal. There's no defending Pep Hamilton. And the fact that we're missing Tim Kelly this year is freaking ridiculous because he was one of the worst offensive play callers and coordinators in the NFL the last couple of seasons. But that's how bad it's been with Pep. I mean, in the Texans' last three games, the offense has scored four touchdowns and they've allowed four touchdowns. It's seriously a net zero in terms of scoring for this offense over the last three weeks. The last time Pep Hamilton's offense didn't allow a touchdown was November 13th against the Giants. Think about that. The last time Pep Hamilton's offense, we're talking about an offensive coordinator, the last time his unit did not allow a touchdown on a pick six or a scoop and score, and in yesterday's case both, was November 13th against the Giants. So, like, I, like, you guys are right. Pep Hamilton's done a terrible job this year. And he could not be back next season. I just I wonder if the Texans are looking at it from that perspective. Like, uh, what good does it do at this point? Like, we move on from him after the year, but five games left in the season. We don't have anybody in house that we feel like could actually be the long term replacement here. Like, hey, we want to see if this guy can be our next offensive coordinator. So let's find out what we have in him. Like, I don't think the Texans believe. I don't think they should believe that they have that dude in the building right now. Maybe they're just thinking, yeah, we'll deal with all of this stuff by the time. We get to the end of the year. I could tell you from talking to those in that building, a lot of people upset.
with how bad the offense has played. Because Tim Kelly, say whatever you want about him, was a well-liked guy as a person. Well-liked guy in that building. They see David Cully go to bat for him for him to keep his job. Cully gets fired. Here comes Pep Hamilton, and the offense is worse. So that has rubbed some people the wrong way in that building. And it should. Everyone should be pissed about what's going on. You felt like there was no way to go but up from this team last year, and especially this offense the last couple of years. But you can't blame it all on the quarterback anymore. And you've got two backup quarterbacks. Like, neither guy that you have, neither of your options are very good. But it's not just like, oh, it's, that's the quarterback's fault. We'll try somebody else, and things will turn around. No, it's, it's through two quarterbacks that this offense has looked as inept as it has. So, once again, I, I can't justify keeping Beb Hamilton around these last five games. I just wonder if they're like, eh, there's only five games left. The season's already lost. Let's just uh, let's just keep it going. Was there a Cody cam in the press boxes I would pay to see Cody's reaction to the old game situation at the goal line, and we need to throw to Troy Hairston with it all on the line? Well, that's... <laughs> Boy. I would love to see Cody's reaction to the old, let's dump it down to the fullback on fourth and goal with the game on the line. Uh, there's, there's by rule, there's no cheering or loud noises allowed in the press box. So no Cody camp. But that doesn't mean <laughs> that I can't demonstratively be upset without making loud noises. So what does that sound like? This is a radio show. It, it, Do you that, make any sound? There's not really any sound except for me just going, like, your play on fourth and gotta have it. Like, fourth and get this touchdown. You put the Browns on the ropes. You make the guy that hadn't played football in 700 days try to beat you for the rest of the game. Fourth and gotta have it is throw it to the defensive player turned fullback. Yeah, the undrafted rookie who was a D lineman last year in college. The defensive player turned ah, fullback dude. at the front. At the front of the end zone. And this is after you've run a handful of plays without just giving the ball. Just like It would be so understandable if you just turned around and handed the ball to Damian Pierce four times. And if they did that and didn't score, I promise you I would not complain about that. And if that. they did that and didn't score and then still got the safety, you'd be like, well, they did it the right, they did it the right way. They did it. Like, I couldn't even get excited about the safety that they were able to get from a defensive standpoint. Because I was like, well, there should actually be five more points on the on the board right yeah, it now. It should be a two possession game. It should be ten to nothing instead of five to nothing. Astros in the fourth inning. And it, and Altuve, as, big game yesterday. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they did not score that touchdown, even after the safety, I thought to myself, "There's no chance they take a lead in the halftime. There's no chance. Like the Browns are going to do something to score the football." And sure enough, <laughs> sure enough, it's Donovan Peoples Jones that has a punt return to score. Gentlemen, do you happen to know when Donovan Peoples-Jones was drafted? This sounds like one of those. He was drafted in 2020. Do you happen to know what pick he was drafted? He was the 187th overall selection in the NFL draft in 2020. Let me answer. He played at Michigan. The Houston Texans at 171 selected Isaiah Coulter, Mm. who played at Rhode Island. He's still on the team, isn't he? Nope. His NFL stats to this point is one target. Mm. One target. Not bad. He's on the Bills practice squad. That's more NFL targets than you have. So in the middle of this game, as they're just letting a chance to beat a team that the fans desperately want to see you beat, that you almost damn near could argue need to beat, okay? Just for the sanity of the people that root for this team, that spend money on this team, you need a victory. In the middle of this, I'm reminded, oh, by the way, because they let a preacher and the head coach run the team for three years, they draft people like Isaiah Coulter instead of Donovan Peoples-Jones, who might get 1,000 yards receiving this year as well. And Jacoby Brissett's been his quarterback for most of the year. It was a revenge game for Peoples-Jones. He remembered who was picked 15 picks before he was taken off the board. You can't forget that. No. God, that was just a – that second quarter – Suck. The worst decision I think the Texans coaching staff made was not going to Davis Mills at halftime, by the way. Yes. I was saying that at the time. Like, not that Davis Mills is very good, but it was a desperation. It should have been a desperation game for the Texans, and it was clear that Kyle Allen didn't have it yesterday. So try something new. Try the other guy who's looked better than Kyle Allen. I was wrong. I thought Kyle Allen would look better than Davis Mills once he took over. That That's not the case. Uh, I would have made that move at that point, and they didn't. It's just this offense is so, so bad, and 
I, it's it's hard to argue in favor of Pep Hamilton today or really at any point this season. Cody, whatever you do, do not go to uh, Texans reporter DJ Bianame's most recent tweet where he has a film breakdown on the Troy Hairston fourth and goal mm. play call. The spacing on this play is an abomination. The idea that this was, like, schemed up. You got three guys all running in the same area by the goal line. There's no room. Just a horrendous play call. It was I, never going to work. Even if it was Damian Pierce, it was not going to work, seeing this on film here. <laughs> it could be the greatest fullback of all time. Larry Zonka reincarnated could be the fullback. I'm not throwing the ball to the fullback on the goal line. Nah, if we've got Zonk, I'm handing it to him. <clears throat> Better. Not if you're Pep Hamilton. No, no, BK. You don't run the ball. No. Earl Campbell could be the running back on this team. Pep Hamilton would find a way to not use him. He wouldn't be on the field. They'd Earl, be saving him. Earl Campbell would be over there just shrugging. Like, what's going on here? Why am I not on the field? Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button down below. And, of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you're a Houston sports fan, Listen to ESPN Houston 97.5 FM or 92.5 FM weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.